What's up guys? Welcome to another video. We got something super amazing here today. What y'all out here for, man? What you here for, huh? Does your life matter? Does your life matter? You ready for this? You ready to take control? Are you giving up control? Or are you taking control? Huh? Just for you guys, we ended up getting a phone call from our favorite person, which is our authorized dealer, coming in, pretty much letting us know that, hey David, we got you a new watch, and check this out. So they sent me a picture of the watch. I wasn't so sure about it, and I never thought I actually wanted this watch. So I let them know that I'm gonna come in and check it out. Honestly, when I went in and I checked it out, I fell in love instantly. It was something super cool. And the honest truth is, I was really looking more for a Submariner and I ended up getting the Super Submariner. So let's check this out, guys. I have such a sick watch in plan right now. We're gonna go through it. I'm gonna give you guys a nice little review, tell you a lot more about the watch, show you more about the watch, and also tell you how I feel about it. So check this out and stay tuned. So guys, let's open this puppy up and let's take a look at the watch. Slide this right off. You got your beautiful, iconic Rolex box with the Rolex logo. Slide this out. A little bit of padding, you know, this is some extra protection. We got a little bit extra protection over here. And then you got the majestic and iconic green. Rolex box, which is super beautiful. And let's open this up. And there you have it. It is the Rolex, not Submariner, but the Sea Dweller two-tone 43 millimeter. And this watch, man, this watch guys, this is something else. So guys, let's get started actually and talking about this watch. And the funny thing is, is that I sized a lot of watches to my wrist and I usually am a two link type of person. I take out two links, but with this watch, I actually ended up taking out three links. And even when I took out three links, it was still a little bit big, but the cool part about this watch is that the easy link mechanism on this isn't the easy link mechanism on a lot of watches, for example, like the Yacht Master or the Day Date, where it just snaps in like a millimeter of room. With this one, you can actually move the link back and forward a substantial amount, which is super cool. And the actual reason behind this is because this is a sea dweller and it's meant to go under sea and actually live under the sea. And the cool part about it is that when you're putting on your scuba suit, they want you without adjusting your watch or taking out links to be able to put it on top of your suit. So if your watch fits you perfectly like this, and then when you put the suit, you need a little bit more room. All you have to do is snap it out and snap it all the way over here and you get so much extra room. So over here, actually, you have the black and gold, which is super cool because you got 18 karat gold. And for you guys that don't know, actually Rolex has its own gold factory where they make their own gold which is super amazing. It's one of the only watch companies that can actually say that they do that. And I feel like it complements it so beautifully. Even the bezel has gold tones on it and inside the dial you have gold accents, which is super cool. Check this out. Now, I'm a guy with small wrists. So in the beginning I was thinking 43 millimeter. This is gonna be a little bit big on me, but I actually love the way it fits. So let me show you guys a little bit. The way that it fits, it's super amazing, but it's also like it has such a big presence to it and it has such an amazing shine. And let's clean this off just a little bit because obviously the gold is very fragile and gentle. So you guys have to bear in mind that the polished gold over here is easily scratched and the steel is actually a lot more durable, but the shine on it, that is unreal. And the watch fits like a glove. So this Rolex actually sits on an oyster steel bracelet, which 
Rolex has many different types of bracelets. So A, they have the Oyster Steel bracelet. B, they have the Oyster Flex, which is actually a rubber bracelet. Then they have leather bracelets that they do. And then they have the Jubilee, which comes on a lot of Dejas. And on top of that, they also have the Presidential bracelet. But I love, love, love the look of the Oyster Steel bracelet, especially in the two-tone. I much prefer the two-tone watches on more Oyster Steel rather than actual Jubilees. I don't know if you guys ever saw the Dejas, uh, the new Dejas 41s on the Jubilee bracelets that are two-tones. They're not quite my favorite. I feel like it doesn't really complement each other so well. I prefer more the steel models on the Jubilee bracelet. So how did the Rolex Sea Dweller come about? Well, Rolex actually ended up partnering up and seeing that the US Navy was actually seeing the advantages of actually dwelling in the sea, which is actually living underwater. And Rolex actually devised a, the Sea Dweller, so they can actually go down the sea and hang out over there. Because prior to that, all they had was the Submariners. And the Submariners can only go down to a certain depth. I don't know if you guys can actually see this, but it says it inside the dial over here. The Sea Dweller can actually go down 4,000 feet inside the water. Guys, so also such a super cool feature on this watch is actually that this watch, if you angle it on the side, has a helium escape valve right over here. And I thought this was super cool and I didn't understand why this watch actually has a helium escape valve. And I was explained that as divers started diving deeper and deeper inside the ocean, what ended up happening is the lower that you go, the more pressure that you have. And a lot of that pressure would actually mess up the watch functions. So in order to keep up with deeper dives, what they actually did over here by putting the helium escape valves, it's gonna release pressure. The deeper you get in and the more pressure that's put on the watch, it's gonna release the pressure by the helium escape valve right over here, which is super cool and super unique. And what actually makes this different than a Submariner, not just the size, cause Submariners are also 40 millimeters and this is a 43. So they call this the Super Submariner for two reasons. A, because it's much bigger size and also B, because it has a helium escape valve and it can go a lot more deeper inside the ocean. Instead of around a thousand feet inside the ocean, this can actually go up to 4,000 feet deep inside the ocean. So another crazy thing is, is that before they had this helium escape valves, when divers would go deep under the water, what would end up happening is that once they come up to decompress, the watch would actually explode and they didn't understand why that's happening. This is patented actually by Rolex the way they made the helium escape valve over here to make it so seamless and not just a big old jumbo rig inside the watch that this helium escape valve actually saves the watch by releasing pressure. When it comes up and you decompress, it's not gonna explode and it's still gonna keep time perfectly and it's gonna look great. So you don't have to spend a lot of money and potentially lose all your money by staying underwater for a little too long and then coming out and be like, hey, what's wrong with my watch? this will be perfectly fine. They didn't have a helium escape valve and it was gonna go really against exactly what they were making. So they had to go back to the drawing board and perfect this watch in order to make it an actual sea dweller and not just a semi sea dweller, if you get what I'm saying. So this watch was actually announced at Baselworld in 2019. And what actually made a crazy statement on this watch is that, hey, a sea dweller has gold in it because all the sea dwellers before it and there's there's all those deep sea and beautiful sea dwellers are all made out of steel. You got some beautiful, beautiful sea dwellers, just like the James Cameron, which is has that beautiful sunburst style, but it's kind of a little too big for most people's wrist. And the thing about this, they made it more of a dress up watch rather than a sea dweller, kind of like, do you wanna take this under the ocean? But the funny thing is, is that you can take this beautiful watch, inner space, and what is inner space? That's what Rolex actually calls the sea dweller. They call anything diving under the water, inner space. And it still has a beautiful look that you can dress this up with a suit and you will be super stylish. That's what honestly really caught my eye because I don't remember ever seeing the Sea Dweller on a two-tone bracelet and I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of two-tone, but when I actually saw this up front, man, this is stunning guys. Definitely caught my perspective. 
And I said, I want this watch and I bought it. And I feel like it was such an amazing buy and purchase. By the way, guys, so let's put the watch over here. Let's rest the watch up. And I wanna show you guys a little bit more of what comes with the watch. So obviously I showed you guys right under here, right? We have the links and I took out three links on this watch, but behind this little compartment, and I don't know if you see this right over here, you're gonna have a few things. A, you're gonna have this beautiful little tag that comes with all the Rolexes and you have my receipt over here, which I'll actually tell you guys a little bit more about the watch. You're gonna have A, over here, your warranty card, your serial number, and also your warranty papers, which actually tells you about Rolex warranty. And on top of that, you're gonna have right over here, your beautiful book. And this book explains to you a lot more about the Sea Dweller and a, lot about, and, and a lot about its functionality and what it was created for. So let's get into price because I'm sure you guys want to know a little bit more about pricing. So I'm going to get into it with you. So the Sea Dweller subtotal was $16,600. But since I live in New York, I had to pay a tax of $1,431.75. I think in New York, we have around an 8.75 tax rate. But in other states, like for example, if you live in Miami, you can save probably around two to 3% on taxes. So my total actually came out to $18,031.71 for this beautiful little puppy. And I love it. And I think it's, you get so much for your money, especially when you want like a dress up watch from Rolex and you wanna have a little bit of gold in it, just getting this two-tone version is super amazing because anything full yellow gold from Rolex, A, right now in the market is super tough to get. And if you do get it, you're starting at an MSRP of around, I would say anywhere from 35,000 and above. And to get this for around half the price, and it has the exact same presence, and also the 43 millimeter case, which wears really big on your wrist and is such a standout piece, is super incredible. And I feel like this is a hot buy. It's super hard to come by, but if you do get your hands on one, me personally, I love it. And if you love it, I would say, hey, this is definitely more than meets the eye. Because when I saw it on the internet, I wasn't the biggest fan. But then when I ended up seeing it in real life, I was like, yo, this is a really nice piece. <laughs> it's actually cool to have the big dial and it's easier to read underwater. But on top of that, it just holds such a stronger presence on your wrist. And I love to make that presence known. I feel like when you wanna dress up and you want a little bit of something flashy, this watch definitely has that flash factor and it's definitely a wow. So guys, as always, I'm always gonna advise you to get what you love. I'm never gonna tell you, like you can ask me, hey David, why did you buy this watch? Is it gonna go up in value? Is it gonna go down in value? Is it a good investment? I actually don't look at watches as an investment and that's a funny thing. So I don't see it as an investment just because an investment to me is more something that I'm gonna buy and sell and make a profit on. But if you're actually getting the watch and you're not buying and selling it and you're not actually taking a profit, is it truly an investment? I don't think so. I just add more watches to my collections as kind of like a gift for myself. So anytime I achieve a certain goal, I like to get myself a little gift. And I just love watches and I'm a watch savant. I love collecting. I want to build up the collection even more. And I have so many other watches that I'm looking to get right now. A few APs that are literally my dream pipeline. Obviously you have the skeleton AP, you have the black ceramic, the white ceramic, but also you have so much beautiful chronographs. I am definitely, definitely interested in a Patek Philippe Nautilus. I don't know if you guys saw it. And I actually love the gold and blue dial, which is super out there, but I feel like it's so classy, slim, and sleek at the same time. I feel like nothing really compares to that as well. And uh, maybe one day we'll get a Richard Mill. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like buy what you love and spoil yourself. Don't look at the prices. Don't look at the resale prices. Don't look at exactly if it's going to go up, go down. Always go with your passion. And guess what? You know what? If you bought something you love and in the future it went up, then great. You made an amazing purchase. I just want to remind you guys a few things. The Daytona, gold Daytona with the green dial 
As you guys may know it as the John Mayer of Daytona, today has a market value all the way up in the 70s and $80,000 range. People are going crazy for it. All because John Mayer went viral on Houdinki's YouTube video, who's amazing. And if you guys actually didn't see that video, go check out Houdinki. Incredible. One of the best watch reviewers out there. But it went crazy after. But before that, it's funny. I actually sat down with my AD and he's like, a couple years ago, I was having these gold pieces just sitting down in the shelves for years and no one was buying them and no one were buying the Platinum Daytonas as well. And today in the market, Platinum Daytonas start at 100 all the way to $140,000. Depends if you're getting obviously the baguette dial. And today if he decides if he wants to keep it or not, then guess what? He made a great purchase, but the purchase should really be for what you love. And he's like he said, I'm saving this watch, I'm gonna hold it, and I buy it out of love, and I guess I made a good purchase. So guys, thank you for tuning in to this channel. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite watches are, and also let me know what watches you think are the next sleepers. What watches are gonna overtake the market? Guys, I mean it. Subscribe and like this video, and share this with anyone that you can. Let's boost up this channel. I really appreciate you guys, and you guys do so much for me and this channel, and we love you guys, appreciate it. We love the comments, we read through everything, and we'll get back to all of you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one, and hopefully we're gonna get another watch very soon coming at you. Peace, guys. Count wins when they got it.